One of the things that people come to Arctic Norway to experience is the midnight sun. The natural phenomenon that occurs every summer around these latitudes. In Lofoten the sun never sets between the 27th of May and 17th of July. Since the topography of Lofoten is dominated by giant peaks shooting up of the sea, the midnight sun is going to play a little bit of hide and seek with you at the end of the day. If you're camped out on the east coast or southern part of the islands, you're unfortunately out of luck. Instead, you need to do a bit of exploring and head for the more remote west coastline and look for an unobstructed view to the north. One of the goals of my trip was to experience the midnight sun. And since the weather forecast promised clear skies for the next 24 hours, I knew that this was my window of opportunity. So I set out onto the roads with one clear mission in mind. To find the midnight sun at the end of the day. When I opened the door to my tent on the morning of the second day, I realized that the spot where I had chosen to pitch my tent the night before was even more beautiful than I had remembered. And with the lovely morning breeze, it seemed like the mosquitoes from the evening before had decided to sleep in this morning. So I wasn't exactly in any rush. I took my time admiring the lovely fjord and surrounding mountains as I started packing up my gear. I continued along the same desolate road that I had followed the evening before and quickly came to the realization that I was quickly running out of water. I have a tendency to always underestimate how much water I'm gonna need at the end of the day. Plus the fact that after a long day in the sun I tried to refuel by drinking way too much water in the evening. So I looked at the map and realized that there probably weren't any water sources for the next hour or so. So I really had to ration with my water. After about an hour into the day's ride, the RV815 joined up to the E10 right by the bridge over to the next island. Right after I came off the bridge, I had a decision to make. Either to go around the island of Gimsaya along the more scenic road, or continue on the more direct E10. I knew I would be in for a long day this day, so I opted to go for the E10, to be able to save some time for a reason that I'll soon talk more about. The two roads merged again at the next bridge and the road continued towards Svolver.
after about 15 kilometers of riding undulating roads with fantastic views over the azure blue water. I reached an intersection where I had the opportunity to make a detour down to Henningsvær, which was about 9 kilometers away. And this is what I had saved some time for earlier in the day. This detour is well worth the time and effort you put into getting there. Just cycling along the RV816 is worth the detour itself. But what's even more worth the detour is one of the most picturesque fishing villages in Norway, Henningsvær. Most famous for having one of the most spectacular football fields in the world that's located on a small island squeezed in by rugged cliffs with the sea surrounding it in three directions. And the village itself also has a lot to offer. A couple of museums, a nice fishing boat harbor and just being a nice small town with an easygoing atmosphere. So I stopped for a little lunch break here in Henningsvær, a picturesque little fishing village on the east coast of Lofoden. Although it only has about 500 inhabitants, it still has one of the most spectacular football pitches in the whole world according to FIFA. And here's why. And going over here I had to go over two very steep but rather short bridges. Going over the second one I could just feel that the air changed. It got a lot colder. You can also start to smell fish as they have these racks of dried fish here as well. In fact this used to be the main fishing port of Lofoden with almost 1000 boats leaving here each day. So now I'm just going to make the 9 kilometers back to the main road again and start to make my way towards the town of Svolver. The town of Kabelvåg is perhaps Lofoden's most historically important location. The town formerly known as Vågar was formed back in the 12th century by King Øystein. But it's believed that people had settled here as early as the late Stone Age. Vågar existed as a city between 1000 and 1400 AD and is considered to be northern Norway's first city. It was famous for its season fishing Lofot Fisket, which you already know still takes place today. The present day town of Kabelvåg was founded in the end of the 19th century and was Lofoden's main city until the introduction of modern ships. The harbor in Kabelvåg was deemed too small and narrow to accommodate the larger ships and the harbor in neighboring Svolver was better suited to accommodate these larger ships. So over time Svolver took over as the main city in Lofoden. After leaving Kabelvåg the traffic intensifies a bit but at the same time there's a nice bicycle path available all the way into Svolver. 
Svolver is the capital of Lofoden and even though it only has about 5,000 inhabitants, it still has a lot of the Norwegian nationwide stores. So it's a great place to restock if there's something you might need for the rest of your trip. And passing through it isn't gonna slow you down that much since it only takes about 10 minutes to pass through the town, which is really nice. About 15 kilometers north of Svolver, I reached probably the nicest rest stop in all of Lofoden, Astnesfjordens Rasteplatz. It offers a viewing platform with a 360 degree bird's eye view of the fjord, and with a very picturesque church on an island within photo distance. It also has a lot of benches and makes for a great opportunity to have a warm meal. I decided to stop here for a while and have some dinner and to admire the stunning scenery. Norway is often considered one of the most expensive countries to visit. And in fact a lot of people avoid going on a bikepacking trip in Norway because of this very reason. But it doesn't have to be that way. If you calculate that you could, at least in theory, wild camp every night and don't spend any money on accommodation and make most of your meals yourself, all of a sudden Norway is looking like a budget-friendly destination. This dinner, for example, I paid less than $10 for. So I found this fantastic rest stop maybe 15 kilometers north of Svolver and I had already bought some chicken back in Svolver so I made myself three very large chicken burritos which I've now enjoyed and I'm totally full right now. Uh, so I thought I'd just come up this set of stairs to admire the view around me here, really spectacular views. So now I'm gonna hop on back on the bike and cycle for about 30 more kilometers until I reach a very special place that I'm going to show you later. About two kilometers after leaving the rest stop, I came to a fork in the road. I could either keep following the E10 and go directly to the ferry terminal in Fiskebol, or take the long scenic way around. I was in no rush to leave the Lofoden Islands, plus I had scouted out a great wild camping spot for the evening, so I decided to go for the scenic route. And just listen to the name of the road. Midnight Solsvejen or the Midnight Sun Road. And there's no doubt why they decided to name the road that name. It's half past eight right now and I must say I really enjoy cycling in the evening like this. The sun sets behind these mountains and the traffic is low as well. Right now I could go on forever but I think I have about 20 kilometers left right now. Once you're on the northern side of the island, you'll most likely see the sun just lying waiting for you out by the horizon.
The road that I'm cycling on right now is called Midnatsolsvejen or the Midnight Sun Road. A pretty fitting name to a fantastic road here along the Arctic Ocean. And the islands you can see sticking out of the water on my left here is the Westerålen Islands and that's where I'm going tomorrow with the ferry. So this will be my last 25 kilometers here in the Lofoten Islands. I stopped for a while at the marvelous beach to take it all in. I just have three words to say. This is magical. Only a couple of minutes after leaving the beach, I found the sign that would lead me to my end destination of the day. Grönför Bicycle Shelter. However, what used to be a secret highway built just for cyclists, now unfortunately had turned into more or less an RV parking. But it was still a great place to spend the last night in Lofoten since it offers a front row seat to watch the midnight sun over the sea. There are even free camping shares for you to borrow. Plus the fact that it's pretty close to the ferry port in the morning. The cyclist shelter itself is a two story wooden house with panoramic windows looking over the sea. And you can definitely sleep in the shelter if needed. But when I was there in the end of June, it was too hot and the inside of the shelter felt like a greenhouse. Plus with all the folks in RVs parked just a couple of meters away, it would have felt kind of awkward to sleep in there. But if you're coming here in the shoulder season with less crowds and a bit chillier weather, it might be a good option for you. So this was the big secret that I talked about earlier today, this cyclist house. But I guess rumors travels fast because now there are maybe 15 or so RVs or camper vans here instead. I thought I was gonna meet at least one cyclist but it seems like I'm the only one. And quickly after I found a spot, a nice gentleman from the UK came over and asked if I needed something and since I was almost totally out of water. I had maybe three deciliters left or so. Uh, he was kind enough to fill up my water bottles and that was truly a lifesaver. I was able to make some food now and have plenty of water left in the morning. And that was kind of the theme for the whole day. I started out the same way this morning. For the first two hours I was mainly just looking for water and usually there are streams coming down off the mountains but since all the snow has mainly gone the creeks are kind of dried up so it's been really hard to find a water source. So now I'm just having a little late supper here in addition to the very big dinner that I just had three hours ago but you're always hungry when you're on a bike tour right? <laughs> And I'm also having a glass of wine to celebrate that I've pretty much done all of Lofoten in two days. And I'm also gonna sit up and watch the midnight sun that's supposed to be here in about an hour or so. My two days in the Lofoten Islands were coming to an end. But I was still very much looking forward to what the rest of the trip had in store for me. 
I was still in the beginning of the trip and knew that the real adventure was out there waiting for me. So join me next time when I continue north and the trip takes me to the Westerålen Islands. Until then, have a good one.